Welcome to Scott Prop and Roll. You know, I realized I had not made a video about prop knives and blades, so I figured I'd take a stab at it. And please hit the like and subscribe button, or I might take it to heart. So if I read the script and there's a knife fight, I'll oftentimes rent a knife kit from one of the prop houses out of Los Angeles. This is, uh, this is Independent Studio Services. You have a real knife. The knife has been dulled down so much that it will not hurt the actor. The kit also includes two rubber knives that are semi-soft. And then there's also a cutoff blade. Nowadays, since visual effects has gotten so much better, we'll just do a cutoff blade knife and we'll stab the actor and visual effects will lay in the blade and it looks really good. I am so glad visual effects has taken over the blade replacement because uh, in the past we'd use retractable knives and this is just a toy one but for an example where there's a spring built in and my big concern is that that the actor is going to get a little too forceful with it or bind the blade and it'll stick um, so I've always disliked retractables I've never had anyone get hurt with one but uh, there's always a first time for everything and it seems to me like it could easily happen so I try not to use retractables. The only time we'll actually use a sharp knife is when the actor has to be cutting rope. And even then we'll pre-score the rope so it cuts a lot easier. If I need to custom make a rubber knife, what I'll do is I'll hire a local fabricator that will mold the, mold the knife for me. And conveniently, I have two expert mold makers that live just down the street. I usually order a hard rubber version and two soft. And the soft ones are made of a self-skinning rubber with an armature inside. And then they'll give it an expert paint job. For larger blades like this machete, we'll actually make them out of aluminum. Just because it's a lot safer, because the less weight you have coming behind the blade, the less damage it'll do. These are super dull. They're not too heavy. You can still maneuver them well, but they still look like they have some weight to them. And then for some serious pounding, we have the rubber machetes. Still stings a little bit. If you need to see the knife actually stuck into someone, you'll take either a cut off blade or a bent blade and attach it to a strap. And this will go under the shirt like that. This is one of the sabers made for the TV show Revolution, which is a dystopian drama. And you see it's made out of aluminum. This is one of the Excalibur swords used in the movie Pitch Perfect. Ben Platt's character was a magician. And uh, there was a scene where the swords had to fall over uh, in the corner of the room. And you still have the tape there. So we had monofilament or fishing line tied right here. And we were off camera could pull the sword over on cue when the director told us to. And thanks to cutting edge technology from companies like Imperial Surface out of California, we now have metallic coatings that make it difficult to tell the rubber knife from the real. And this one is the real one, by the way. We don't just do knives and swords. We do rubber axes, rubber pickaxes, a bloody tomahawk with permanent blood on it, no matter how you slice it, a knife fight scene can be dangerous, even with the rubber. Uh, you know, the eyes are sensitive. This could gouge out an eye. You've just got to be very careful. Work really closely with your uh, stunt coordinator and come up with a, a good plan and let the actors know what's going on every step of the way. Well, that's it for prop knives, blades, and swords. I hope you enjoyed it. I feel like I took it to the hilt with all the puns. Um, if you did get something out of this episode, please slash stab uh impale the like and subscribe buttons and uh yeah i'm, I'm all out of knife puns uh, i guess that's it cut <laughs>